ओम ज्ञानतिरांदस्य ज्ञानाजनिशलाकया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिवेदातस्वामीना नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर इन दिस सेशन विल बी डिस्कसिंग from the same verses we have been discussing in the past 5 sessions verses 25 to 30 of the 16th chapter of the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam this is part number 6 we are discussing the various qualities of the supreme lord the transcendental qualities now shila prabhupada explains the quality of the lord's beauty as far as the beauty of the lord is concerned he has some special features that distinguish him from all other living beings krishna when he appears in his original form a uh, human like form manushin tanumashrit human like form it's not a human form it's not a material form it looks like a material form of the human being looks like so he still he has some special features by which you can recognize him as a completely different from apart from all the other humans so he has some special features just like krishna has got a mark on his chest called shrivatsa shrivatsa it's the hoof print of a calf shree vatsa vatsa means ka uh, on the chest which is the residing place of shri lakshmi lakshmi is uh, residing on the bosom of the lord the chest of the lord so he is also called shri nivasa the lord uh, shri lakshmi ji resides on his chest so that place where lakshmi ji resides that place there is one mark called shrivatsa so that shrivatsa is only there on the chest of the lord only the lord has that marking nobody else can have that marking so like this he has got some special features that distinguish him from everyone else hmm. over and above those special features will distinguish him from all other living beings he has some special attractive beautiful features regarding his beauty by which he attracts the mind of even radha rani who is the super most beautiful creation of the lord radha rani is very 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 beautiful most beautiful among everyone else other than the lord so she is most beautiful and krishna he is so beautiful he attracts even radha rani so how much more beautiful krishna should be to attract even radha rani who is the most beautiful created uh, creation of the lord hmm? therefore he is known as madana mohana one who attracts the mind of even cupid madana madana is the most beautiful personality in this universe among the created beings of the material world so krishna attracts even madana madana mohana he captivates the mind of madana so is millions and billions of times more beautiful than madana that is described in the brahma samhita kandarpa koti kamaniya vishesha shobham uh, his beauty is special that he attracts uh, even cupid because he is billions of times more beautiful than cupid now shri la jeeva goswami prabhu 
who is one of the previous Acharyas. He has scrutinizingly analyzed other transcendental qualities of the Lord and he says affirmatively that Lord Sri Krishna is the absolute supreme personality of God is Param Brahman. How do we ascertain somebody is God? Because he looks like uh, another uh, created being but he is not. But how do we ascertain he is God? By his qualities. So his uh, analyze the transcendental qualities displayed by the Lord when he incarnates. Uh, Srila Jiva Goswami Prabhu has concluded that uh, the Lord is, uh, Krishna is the Supreme Lord, mm, absolute Supreme Personality of God. So uh, Srila Jiva Goswami explains that Krishna is omnipotent by his inconceivable energies. Omnipotent means he has got all kinds of powers because he has so many energies and he is uh, the Yogeshwara or the supreme master of all mystic powers. There are so many mystic powers but uh, a yogi who is practicing Ashtanga Yoga can have only Ashta Siddhi eight major mystic powers, eight minor mystic powers and four auxiliary mystic powers. Elsewhere Prabhupada explains. Totally at different types of mystic powers are twenty. Eight major, eight minor and four subsidiary. So Krishna has unlimited mystic powers. So nobody else can have unlimited mystic powers. They can have some limited mystic powers. 8 at the most or some rare cases 10 but Krishna has unlimited mystic uh, uh, powers hmm. not only that he is the one who bestows mystic power on somebody who desires to have it after practicing yoga hmm. devotees never want any mystic powers devotees don't want any favor from any uh, from the Lord they don't desire for it, they don't aspire for it, they never want it. Hmm. So that is uh, Lord's uh, uh, greatness. Hmm. Uh, so he is the one, Krishna is the one who is the master of all mystic powers, Yogeshwara. In the Bhagavad Gita it is said uh, in the 18th uh, chapter last verse, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Yatra Partho Dhanurdaraha Krishna is addressed as Yogeshwara hmm? by Sanjaya hmm? Yogeshwara Krishna so he uh, 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 Krishna is the master of all mystic powers, unlimited powers. So, because he is the Yogeshwara, Srila Prabhupada says, his eternal form is spiritual, a combination of eternity, bliss and knowledge. Our form, our material form, however a person may be learned, however intelligent he may be, but uh, our form is basically a form of ignorance. Material form is filled with ignorance. And this ignorance, even if we try to learn uh, whole life, this ignorance cannot be eradicated by that acquisition of material knowledge. Material knowledge does not counteract the ignorance due to our accepting a material body. It is only uh, by the Supreme Lord's blessing that we uh, get His uh, mercy to eradicate the ignorance within our heart when Krishna shines the 
the divine knowledge, transcendental knowledge within our heart. He says this in the Bhagavad Gita. Tesham eva anukampartham aham agnyanajam tamaha nashayami atma bhavasto jnana deepena vasvat. So Krishna dispels the darkness of ignorance uh, in every living entity who so desires. Krishna only would dispel the darkness by giving them the enlightenment in uh, transcendental knowledge. So I will uh, continue to explain the uh, nature of this uh, um, knowledge that Krishna possesses. Uh, Krishna's knowledge is not static, it is of dynamic nature. Hmm? Uh, the knowledge of the Lord is unfathomable, that means nobody can estimate how much knowledge the Lord has got. And it is dynamic means according to the situation time, place, circumstances, he can actually uh, apply knowledge suitably in different situations. Hmm. His knowledge is uh, dynamic, hmm. dynamic knowledge. Hmm. Uh, now regarding his uh, uh, beauty. Srila hmm? uh, Sutta Goswami says in the Bhagavatam that even though Krishna was observed by the citizens of Dwaraka every day, they were always increasingly anxious to see him again and again. Hmm? So, what is the nature of his beauty? His beauty is ever fresh and newer and newer beauties are every moment being displayed by him. This is called dynamic quality of beauty, dynamic, ever increasing, ever fresh beauty Krishna displays. So, the residents of Dwaraka, every day they would want to see Krishna's beauty and would be attracted more and more and more and more. Increased attraction, increased appreciation of Krishna's beauty and they become, there is no saturation also. Uh, so, there is no saturation in uh, transcendental qualities of the Lord, there is no saturation. So, even though those devotees who appreciate the Lord's uh, beauty every day, but uh, they cannot attain by any amount of work the uh, equality with the Lord in His beauty. Not possible. That's not possible. So, none of the qualities, even though the living entity is pretty uh, possess in small uh, quantity the qualities of the Lord, they can never equal him or excel him in those qualities by their efforts, different endeavors, that is never possible. So, the Lord is always the Lord, eternally he is the Lord, unlimited qualities, unlimited number of qualities and unlimited extent, unlimited quantity of those each quality. And the living entities have some of the qualities which the Lord has and they possess in very, 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 very insignificant quantity. But that insignificant quantity of whatever good qualities we have is sufficient, more than sufficient for us to be happy, to be blissful, to be situated always in uh, transcendence, etc. It is enough. Hmm? We do not have to strive for uh, uh, more qualities or uh, greater quantity of those qualities. We do not strive for any of those. Hmm. 
okay so i'll stop here thank you very much hari krishna